If you're a painting contractor, chances are occasionally you have customers that say, hey, I couldn't move my fridge. Would you be able to move that for us? Or, hey, I know that you said that I needed to get my piano out of the room. I'm not able to do that and I couldn't find a moving company. Can your crew move my piano for me? When that happens, you need to make sure that you have a hold harmless form that the customer is signing. And what that form does is it removes liability should something happen so that your crew is not liable for that. This is a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how you can automate this entire process completely digital so the crew with a matter of seconds can generate a form with all the customer information on it. It gets sent to the customer, they sign it and immediately get stored into your project management system. So this is a very advanced automation. If you're new to automation, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. We use Airtable, we use make.com, which is an automation tool. There's a little bit of JavaScript programming, and we also use a tool called Fillout as well to make it easy and faster for crews to generate these documents. So this is a very in-depth video, but it does literally go step-by-step step every single piece of the way. And then I've also broken this video up into little chunks that you could watch if you just needed to watch one portion. But this is a six-part series that we're going to dive in. And the first thing I wanna do is show you exactly what I'm talking about with how cool the outcome is. So first I'm gonna show you this quick 60 second clip of what it is that we're making so that you can decide if this is what you're looking for. And then if it is what you're looking for, then you can continue on through the next 40 to 60 minutes of content here. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is walk through this process map here. These are the videos that I'm going to be building. Uh, but before I show you those videos, I want to explain the process that we want to have happen. So blue boxes here are customer actions, things that happen that they're going to do. So the customer is going to request that a large piece of furniture is moved. The crew leader is going to go into their mobile app and submit a few details on what it is that they're moving, which will automatically trigger an automation to send an email to the signature or to the customer to be able to sign a document. The customer is going to sign that document, and then that's going to auto save into the Airtable project. So I want to actually show you what that looks like. So I have my phone right here. So on my phone, I can open up Airtable. And this is a thing that I think is so cool about Airtable. Right now, I am an admin, so I see all of these interfaces. But the crew leaders that use this inside of their the production view here, they only see these three options. So inside of projects, there might be 200 projects inside of the system, but as the crew leader, Chris, I'm only going to see the projects that are assigned to me. So in this case, let's say I'm at Chris Kiefer's house and Chris Kiefer says, hey, can you move my piano? So crew leader comes into the project here. I click generate hold harmless form and it's automatically assigning this thing to my project. So I'm gonna say, uh, move piano. And that's all I have to do. So I literally say, what is it that we're moving? And I want to jump over to this air table base just to show you in real time how fast and just awesome this is. So as the crew leader, I click submit and immediately in the air table record, this record pops up It says move piano. And then the cool part is in the background, the customer automatically got an email and this just came in seconds ago. So here's the email that the customer gets. They open up this and inside it says, hey, this is for, you know, Chris Kiefer, the PO number that we're on, the address, which in my case, because it was a test, I had deleted that, but the address would be there. And it says, I hereby release liability for ACP to do this, move the piano. So I'm going to acknowledge, type in my name, Chris, and sign this form. Then back over inside of here, you can see that in the Airtable base, the document popped up and was auto populated here. It says it was signed. It's got a little audit trail when it was signed, all that information that was um, submitted it even has the IP address of the person that signed the document. So that all happens. And it's literally like super, super easy for the, for the crew leader and the customer to do this. There's no paper forms. There's no taking pictures or trying for that crew leader to manage this document. This document is 100% percent 
managed internally in the system. And then now the crew can immediately go in and do that. So All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is actually build out the Airtable base. So let's dive right in. This is the form, the hold harmless form that this particular client is wanting replicated. So what I'm gonna do is go into Airtable here and I made a new table that is called hold harmless. And this is, has the name of the sheet. I'm associating it to a given project. So I could come in here and say, you know, this, the automation would do this, but I'm gonna associate it to my own project. And then I added a bunch of lookup table, lookup fields here that are all going to be from, looked up from the uh, original project. So if you wanna ever add more lookup table, lookup columns, you can click on the linked record field, click add lookup fields, and we can do like the address, the combined job address as well. So add that field in. Now we have, and the reason I know which fields to add is because on this form, we need the customer name, their job number, which actually, great point, we should add that as well. So we're gonna do a lookup number here. Oh wait, we already added the job number. So we need their job number, the address, city, state, zip, I hereby agree to release liability. So this is what we're going to say in the e-signature form. And then ACP will not be held responsible for injury or damage incurred in the above. And then the signature. So the last thing that we need here is the, we're gonna make a field here for signed agreement. And this is just going to be an attachment field. And so this is where e-signatures is going to drop the signed document after it is signed. So then we jump over to e-signatures. We're going to say, I would like to send a contract and we want to use a sample service agreement. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And then this, we're going to say that this is a ACP hold harmless agreement. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy in this information that they have here. So, we're gonna paste this entire thing in. And so I paste all that in. And I think it's even gonna let us bring in an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab their logo. ACP, thank you, KG logo. So here's our logo, save image as ACP logo, save. Now I can go to the e-signatures and right here, I want to put in a image, ACP logo. So we've got the image in there. Let's go ahead and center that image. So hold a harmless agreement, release of liability. We're going to go ahead and center that. Let's make that heading one. Then the customer name that we want to put in here is going to be what we have it here. So this will be project contact first name and project contact last name. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this just so it looks like that. And this one. So now inside of this hold harmless agreement, I'm going to say bracket bracket. We're gonna call this project contact first name and then space, let's go ahead and copy this. And the job number, bracket, bracket, job number. I wanna make sure that again, this matches as well. So job number, go ahead and do that, save. And then the address where you don't need to have all these fields cause it's gonna be one big one. So this is going to be the combined job address. So we can do that. And then let's copy that field and we will map it to here with brackets. I hereby agree to release liability and hold harmless for this action. So then what we want here is a the notes field. And this is going to be, I'm actually going to rename this to hold harmless, um, describe. We're going to call it description of activity. So what is the activity 
or maybe instead of activity, we'll say action. We save that and we put And then ACP painting will not be responsible for any damage incurred in the above action. Here's the signature. So right here, we want to add a signer field and we want this to be is going to be name. This is mandatory, only the first signer default value And what else do we want to add in here? The date. Mandatory, yes, signer ID. The service, so that's good. And then drop down checkbox. And then the rest of this here, we can say We're gonna put a checkbox. So they're gonna say, I agree. And then they're gonna sign down there. So we wanna go ahead and say that we want to, oops, save as template. And we're gonna call this the ACP hold harmless template. So this next part is building out the fill out form that you're going to need. And so let's dive right into that and we can get going with the fill out form tool. All right, the next part of this is going to be creating the form that is going to allow a user or the crew leader to fill out a hold harmless or fill out the details for the hold harmless form and then enter it into this hold harmless table. So we're going to use a tool called fill out for this. And it's a super handy tool. I'll show you what this looks like. Once you are inside of fill out, you can create a new form. I'm going to use one or duplicate one from this uh, new job leader AWO. Um, and I'll show, I'm gonna rename this new hold harmless form and continue. And then when I go in here to open it up, you can see that I can just call this hold harmless or hold harmless. And then the project is going to be, uh, the default value will be the project record ID, which is gonna come from Airtable. This one we're going to say, eh, we can delete that, we won't need that. We won't need amount and we won't need this. So all they're gonna have to do is say, hold harmless. Actually, let's go back to what they had here. So here we're gonna say, Describe the action we are doing for the homeowner. Action described, e.g. Okay, and then the other one would be physical signed, hold harmless pay, uh, document. And this would be if they're working with a homeowner that doesn't have internet or email, they can have a physical one signed in hand to them. So, this would be, uh, we wanna first make sure that we're connected to the right table. So we want to connect, disconnect from that and refresh. And we are going to connect to the, let's go to integrations, synced to, we wanna edit this and we want to create a record, not in the AWO table, but, uh, so we have to disconnect it first. So we're going to first say disconnect, Airtable, we want to do ACP, and the base is project management. The table that we want to connect to is the hold harmless table. And so we're going to create a record in the hold harmless, and the mappings we're going to use, actually we'll do that inside the form. So I finished setup here, go back to edit. So project, we are going to map to the project table. And then the describe action here, we want to connect to description of action. And then for this one, uh, we want to connect it to the signed agreement. So those are the three fields that we need. And then the last thing here, when we click publish, it gives us a link here. And so we wanna copy this 
And we also want to make sure that there are URL parameters that are included in this. So project record ID is one that we're going to need. And so what that means is inside here in the projects table, we are going to add a new column that is called hold harmless form URL. And this can be a button. And then the URL is going to be this. So I'll put this in quotes. And I want to do the and sign. And this is where we want to put in the, how do they have that written there? Project record ID, all lowercase with dashes. So we're going to do and project underscore record underscore ID, and then the equal sign with another and, and we're going to say record ID. So this is going to be the record ID of the project and create. So now, uh, whoops, create field. And so now we have this, oh, we should rename this to say label would be generate hold harmless form. And we're going to make this. Okay, so now we have that. So what's going to happen if I go to Chris Kiefer. Once again, I will just pick someone here. So when I click this, um, it looks like I forgot to publish. Oh, we need to put a question mark. That's the issue. So I put a question mark there. Now, when I click this, it opens up project record ID, automatically fills in Shoemaker, and says this is a test and submit. I just want to interrupt this video really quick to say, we do stuff like this at Boolean all the time. So this is an advanced automation, but it's a common type of scenario that happens that requires paperwork and management and documenting and taking pictures of things. And when you can digitize the process like this, it allows your crews in a matter of seconds to generate forms that can be used by your customers and quickly generate, get the document, and then also keep record of that with the project. So. This is a super cool automation, but this is what we do all day, every day at Boolean Automation. So if you've got other ideas, let us know. Or if you want help in mapping out a given process, you can reach out to us down below in the description. So this is probably the most advanced portion. We are going to be dealing with a little bit of JavaScript and the eSignature API. So buckle up. This is hard, especially if you're not a developer, but I will walk you through exactly how to do this. So let's dive right in. First, we're going to go to the automations and I'm going to create an automation from scratch here and just walk you through how I think about this. So the first thing is we need to trigger the automation to fire. So remember, we have our hold harmless table here. And I want any time that there is a record in this row that has everything filled out and the signed agreement is empty, I need this to fire. In my situation, when I generated the, when I, when I have the crew generate, I guess I'll do it right now to just show you. When I go in here and the crew clicks, generate a hold harmless form. If they were to drop a file in here, because let's say the customer doesn't have uh, email or they're not tech savvy and they'd prefer to just sign something via paper, the crew leader can upload this. And if they do that, it's not going to have the automation trigger. So when I put, you know, test, 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 and I don't have a file there inside of my Airtable base, I have a document that says signed agreement or the, the signed agreement is empty but everything else is filled out. So that's when I need the automation to trigger. So if I go back to my automations here, I want to say, I'm gonna say when a record matches certain conditions and the conditions that I want to be, uh, or first I'm gonna select the hold harmless table because that's what we're watching. And the, the conditions that we're gonna be looking for is first when the description 
is not empty. So we want to make sure that if, if it is empty, that would be silly to send to the customer. We need to make sure that there is uh, some description of what we're doing or it defeats the whole purpose. So I'm going to add that in. We're also going to say, and the signed agreement section, which is what I was just talking about. So signed agreement is empty. And then lastly, uh, the project, we also need to know the project. If we don't have a project, we're not going to be able to, to know any of like, who's this getting sent to or any of that. So once again, we're going to say, and the project is not empty. So this is, it's always nice to have a couple different fields and uh, that you're watching to make sure that, for example, if I didn't have these other two and I just added a new record like this, how do I make sure that this doesn't trigger the automation? Cause that was a mistake. It's not, doesn't actually have the information. So in order to do that, I'm modifying the automation to have a couple other fields that I know these are never going to be empty if it's a correct uh, submission that came from the crew. So now I can click choose record and it's showing that this is the record that um, is that meets the criteria. And now I just need to add the script, which is going to trigger this whole automation. Now inside of eSignatures, they have their API documentation. So you can, um, you're going to open up API docs and then in the API documentation here, um, it has an example of what this request needs to look like in order to send a contract. So you can, um, if you want, you can start and, you know, copy all of this, or if you're doing this and following along exactly how I am, I'm going to actually give you the code. There's not an easy way for me to send this script through here other than I can email it to you. So I'm going to give the entire code, which I'm going to paste in here right now. I'm going to provide you with this code and then walk through what you're going to need to change. So from the top, the only thing that we need to have as an input variable is the record ID uh, that is coming from Airtable. So the value of that is going to be the Airtable record ID. So this is the record ID that we're, that is triggering this automation is going to be right there. So you can see that right at the top, it says, you know, configure input config record ID. So now we're getting the record ID that we just passed in. And then the base, um, if you have a different title for your whole, your table, you're going to want to name this, whatever that base is called. And then, um, in this section here, you just need to uh, modify whatever field names you are passing through. So let me go ahead and show you. In fact, I'm going to do a side by side here. So let's go view data and I've got on this side, this will be easier to explain how this all comes together. So you can see here, I've got combined job address, and that is literally the title of the field here. So it matches identically combined job address, job number, project contact, first name, project contact, last name, project contact, phone, email, and description of action. So those are all of the fields that I'm passing in. Then we have to, um, so make sure that all of these match exactly. Then the next part here is we need to let the address equal the value of that variable. So this is a step here. This address field is what is going to be inside of eSignatures. So just to show you how this works in my template here, the hold harmless agreement has the project contact, first name, project contact, last name, job number, et cetera, all that. So here, what we're doing is we are getting the variables um, or sorry, we're storing all this information as address, job number, first name, et cetera. So the, this part needs to match what was up here. And then down here we have, you know, where it says email, we're writing in the, the variable here is called email, which is taking the value that got written here into the email portion there. And then in the next portion here, we've got some placeholder fields. So we need to choose that the API key. So in this placeholder field section, this is where we're going to put in all those variables and this part here project contact first name needs to match exactly what you have inside of your e-signature field. So I'm taking the API key project contact first name and the value is going to be 
first name like that, which is going to be taking the value from this section. Then the next one here, API key project contact last name, that's this field right here. And again, it's taking the value from this piece right there. And we continue down the list. So all those need to come in. Then the next part that you need to make sure to edit is this e-signature API code here, which is the same one that is right, right here, e-signature.io API contracts token, and then your secret token. So you're going to take this and you're going to paste in the token here. So you're going to want to make sure that you uh, put in your token um, right here. So take this and paste the token in there. And then, and the token that you're going to, to use is the one inside of your e-signature section here. This is the token that needs to be pasted right there. Everything else is good. So once you do that, you can click finish editing, and then you can actually run a test on this section here by doing this test action. And if it's all mapped correctly, you'll see that it was successfully created. And then if you check your email, you should have received an email from this. And so we'll do this right now. And you can see that when this is fired correctly, zero minutes ago, I just got this. And I can go look. If I need to make any edits or modifications, I can do that by going and editing the, the template if it's just formatting. Or I could go, if there's something that's not showing up, the biggest thing that, or the biggest mistake that people make is the template information here does not match up exactly. So this is the most complicated part of the whole automation. Like I said, I'll provide you with the code that is necessary. So in fact, I'm going to have, I'll find a way in the description down below to put the JavaScript that is needed so that you can copy and paste it and then go through and just make edits to the various pieces that you need to make edits to. So hopefully that all makes so sense. We are going to dive right into the automation that takes a signed document from eSignature and saves it into your Airtable base. All right, so I'm going to use a tool called Make. I think that using Make is slightly easier than using eSignature's API. So we're going to dive right in here. The first thing that I need to do is always name the scenario. So this is going to be signed document in e-signature, and then I like doing an arrow, auto, save in Airtable. So there's my name, and we're gonna call this a test for YouTube. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab the e-signature module. So you can go right in here and type in e-signature, and we want to do uh, the process that we're looking for here is called watch contract signed. So watch contract signed. And then we need to actually make a webhook for this to be sent to. So we're going to add a new webhook. And the connection that we want to have right here, we're just going to say uh, YouTube test signed contract. And we are going to make a connection to the AAPP. Uh, or sorry, we need to make a new connection here. We're going to click new connection. Connection this is going to begin be test YouTube ACP. And then the secret token that you're going to paste in here is inside of e-signatures under API and automation. We want to copy this secret token and then we're going to paste it right there and hit save. That's going to create our test here. We can save that. And now our webhook has been updated as well. Now, what we need to do is we're going to click OK, and we need to have a uh, Airtable step here that this is going to be Airtable, and we want to update a record. So we're going to update a record, and now that we have this, the address is all ready and on and everything, we are going to uh, click Let's see if it actually is already mapped, if we have all the variables that we need. So I'm gonna go to the ACP base. This is where I'm sending the hold harmless signed document. We're going to go to the hold harmless table. And then the record ID, we would want this to be the metadata from the, the step here. So this would be the metadata. 
And that's the record. That's the data that we were sending to e-signatures when we generated the e-signature document. And then all the only other thing we need is just down here underneath the signed agreement section. We want to write or this is these these properties here just to show you. This is the name of the fields that are able to be written to. So really our only options here are we can update the signed agreement section, the status could be updated, the projects copy, or uh, this one right here. So those are the options that it's allowing for us to choose from. And in this case, I want to paste the signed agreement. So the file URL is going to be the signed contract URL. So that's the um, one that we want there. And then the title we can choose. So I like saying, What's the contract title, which in my case, I named ACP Hold Harmless. And then we can just put in the signer's name. So we are going to do um, signers, whoops. So we want to do signers and signer name like that. So what that means is it's gonna take the title of our document, which is ACP Hold Harmless, and then attach whatever the signer's name is that was put on there. And so that's all we need to do, click OK. And now we can turn this on. Um, oh, we have to save the scenario first. So let's go ahead and hit save. And then we're gonna turn this on. Let's go back and watch this. So we've got the process here. So it's turned on. Now what I'm going to do is I sent myself a new template that is, or a new document that's ready to be signed. So we can see if this works in real time. This was sent just seven minutes ago. So I'm gonna click view and sign, check and John Doe and there. And then we're going to look to see, looks like it ran, it updated and let's go into the base. And there we go. It looks like that worked out perfectly. I just realized the one other thing that we'd want to adjust here is instead of saying pending signature, we just got the signature. So what we would want to edit on this step here is one more thing, which is change the status to signed. So I can go ahead and do that. And now when it runs again, it would automatically change this to sign, which is what we'd want because it just got In this video, we're going to walk through how to modify the interface that the crews are using to be able to see that the documents that they have generated have been signed and all that. We're going to dive right into the Airtable base here and I'm gonna jump into my interfaces. And so over here, this is called the page detail on the side. I made a, a button here on the form or on the interface for the crew leaders to, to be able to make these. But what I also want to do is see all the existing forms that have yet to be signed um, down here. So the way that we need to do that, because this is based on projects, is I need to actually go in and make a property inside the projects table that's going to show what I want to see. So if I go look right now, I can see that there is a, um, what's that called? Let's go look at it. So right now we are associating documents to the table, to the project table, but what we're missing is the name of that, the fields that we just added. So I'm going to go dive in all the way to the side and we have Aha, uh -huh. so this actually got I didn't uh, I mislabeled this. This is the hold harmless documents. So now I have saved the hold harmless documents. So back in the interface view, I can add a section here that says, if I type in hold harmless, it's going to show me all of the hold harmless documents that are associated with this. And in this section, I can choose which fields are visible. So I don't really need the address that's kind of irrelevant and project is as well. What I want to see for sure is the actual signed agreement, which is right there, and the status. So now I can see that the hold harmless document has been signed. And the cool part about this is that as the crew leader, so I've got a whole bunch of test ones in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these. So if I go into the hold harmless table, 
I'm going to clear out all these test ones. Let's delete all those. So as the crew leader, right now there's no documents, right? The hold harmless documents, they're, they're empty. I'm going to go ahead and publish this and show you what this looks like from the crew leader's perspective on their phone. So I'm going to open this up here and let me actually go back to the data table here. So from my phone, I'm opening up Airtable here. And from my phone, I'm gonna go into the project management and to the production, projects, Chris. So now I am creating a hold harmless form for the customer. And when I'm in here, I can say, you know, move large dresser. So as soon as I submit this, you'll see that it shows up inside of the database here and it also automatically sent to the customer. But what I want to emphasize here is that inside of Airtable, you can see that now, because I just generated it, there's a document that is saying it's pending a signature. So th that means that the customer has not signed that yet. If I go into where the customer would have gotten this, I'm gonna refresh here. And so I just got this zero minutes ago. I'm going to click view and sign. So I do that, type in my name, sign. It updates here. Now it's a signed agreement. And the, the status uh, would have also, or I need to edit that automation, but it would have changed to sign as well. And then inside of here, you can see that it also updated. So I can see that they have now signed that hold harmless uh, agreement. So that is how we can modify the base to be able to show those documents and uh, correctly. And we can do this type of process for AWO forms or any other type of document that might be necessary to see. But that is how you modify the interface so that the crews can see that those documents that they sent have actually been signed. All right, guys, you made it. This is huge. This is a super advanced automation. So if you made it all the way to the end, give yourselves a pat on the back. This is the type of stuff that we do here at Boolean, and hopefully you were able to make it in with no issues. If you did run into anything, please do not hesitate to reach out. Always looking to improve the process, but this was something that I was super excited that our team figured out, and I wanted to make sure that other people knew how to do this as well.